Hadar, Ethiopia, in East Africa's Great Rift Valley. This deceptively barren region boasts one of the richest fossil records on Earth. In 1974, a single specimen unearthed here would yield exciting new information about man's evolutionary past. In this unforgiving landscape, a joint French-American excavation team would find what they'd been seeking for three years, a partial skeleton of what was then the oldest known hominid, nicknamed Lucy. Formerly called Australopithecus afarensis, she is some three million years old with a small brain about the size of a chimpanzee's. Lucy's small skeleton had ape-like features, strong jutting jaws, long arms, and short legs. But this Australopithecine had a feature unique to hominids. She walked on two legs. Professor Randall Sussman of the State University of New York Stony Brook has been studying Lucy's anatomy. He says that survival in Africa's changing landscape required extraordinary physical adaptations. Dr. Sussman's tests compare Lucy's bones and musculature with those of modern humans and apes. The ancient bones reveal that Lucy would have been capable of walking upright on two feet. Of special note was the shape of her pelvis. Lucy's hips were wide to support the weight of her internal organs when she stood. In contrast, the pelvis of quadrupeds like chimpanzees is long and narrow. Within the spectrum of primates, Lucy's pelvis is more human than ape-like. From the hip joint, the thighs slant inward from the waist toward the knees. This structure would permit stronger legs that could carry more weight, lowering the body's center of gravity and making an upright posture easier to hold. Enlargement of the brain and intelligence was not the first thing in human evolution. The first thing in human evolution was instead walking on two legs, bipedality or bipedalism as we call it by for two and pedalism for walking on two feet. So walking on two legs then is seen very clearly in Australopithecus afarensis, but at the same time Lucy and Australopithecus afarensis in general had fairly small, ape, almost ape-like brains. And in fact, many other aspects of their skeleton are very primitive as well. So we now have a different conception of what sparked the divergence of apes and humans, and it was walking on the ground on two legs. Lucy, the ancient biped, stood less than three and a half feet tall and looked a lot like the modern pygmy chimpanzee. But she walked upright with a gait not unlike our own. Her discovery was undoubtedly a turning point in man's quest to understand his origins. Ancient theaters of evolution. Africa's forests are man's primeval home. They are constant custodians of life and the only place on earth that still harbors our nearest kin. These ecosystems, in turn, are preserved by the complex interactions of their inhabitants.
with an arboreal design and intelligence, the first ape-like primate, Proconsul, was well adapted to life in the forest. Its descendants, among them chimps, gorillas, and man, still find sanctuary in his shadow. These are chimpanzees, the most human-like apes, sharing nearly 97% of our DNA. Molecular evidence suggests that chimps are more closely related to humans than to gorillas. Humans may look, sound, and behave differently from apes, but all of our differences lie in a narrow 3% gene pool. In the remote forests of central Zaire lives another distant relation. Little is known about the bonobo, or pygmy chimpanzee, identified as a species less than a century ago. Here in the forest, bonobos, a matriarchal society, rely on each other for food, protection against their enemies, and even emotional support. Among the higher orders of primates, bonding has increased the chances of survival. In many, sometimes startling ways, this society of primates bears an uncanny resemblance to our own. Bonobos can walk upright, unlike any of the other great apes. Intelligent creatures with a large vocabulary of vocalizations and body language, they are extremely social. And like humans and chimpanzees, they can be affectionate, finding comfort in the warmth of their friendships. Volcanoes cause Africa's Great Rift Valley. 